What really helps a movie resonate with an audience is when a movie is inspired by the life in which the audience lives in. It was awe-inspiring to see Godzilla destroy city after city, but this was a movie's representation of the devastating nuclear destruction that happened from a nuclear bomb like Hiroshima in Japan. Professor X vs Magneto in the X-Men series was absolutely spectacular for fans to watch, but this again was inspired by civil rights leaders Martin Luther King and of course Malcolm X, where Malcolm X was Magneto and Professor X was Martin Luther King. The greatest art is often inspired by life, but what happens when art inspires life? Well, that is the million dollar question when it comes to the movie The Joker. Now, if you haven't heard about this movie, it was absolutely spectacular. Like, Joaquin Phoenix's performance as the Joker was honestly one of the best performances I've ever seen in my life. But this movie, even before its release, was surrounded by controversy. Many people were worried that this movie, The Joker, could inspire a real-life villain of its own. Whether that was another mass shooting or a terrorism attack, there was real worries that going to watch this in a public theater would not be safe. So in this video, I want to examine was the controversy of The Joker actually justified. Hi, my name is Fly Stewie. This is the Uneducated Investor Podcast where we connect investing to pop culture. Feel free to subscribe, drop a like because these videos take a long time to make and it really helps beat that YouTube algorithm, baby. So without no further ado, let's get better at business together. Now there's often times that art really does inspire real life and really does inspire people to do things and moves them. It, it gives them energy, it gives them purpose, motivation. Think about just what watching the moon landing on TV inspired. Think about what watching Michael Jordan, how much basketball players internationally around the world he inspired. And when it specifically comes to the movies, one of the most dark but real life examples of a movie inspiring terrorism was of course the 1920 classic, in quotation marks, Birth of a Nation, which was a movie that inspired KKK all over America. So that begs the question, does the movie like the Joker, does it really truly inspire mass violence and does it really earn the criticism that it gets that inspires terrorism? Well the best way to truly understand this question and answer it is to look at the movie itself. The first thing you really have to notice about the movie is the character of the Joker himself. Now the traditional Joker, he's more immaculate, he's more strategical, he's more purposeful for everything he does. He has a plan, he's maniacal. He's a guy that simply just gets the job done. Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, Arthur, he wanders through this whole movie pretty much without a plan. He pretty much just accidentally trips into being the Joker. One might say, honestly, if he never entered that train where, spoiler alert, by the way, this is a spoiler review of the whole thing. I'm just gonna let you guys know, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Uh, if you have not seen the movie, now is the time where you can click off, but big spoiler warning, do not get mad. Spoiler, 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 spoiler. One might note that if the Joker never entered the train with the three Wayne Enterprise investment bankers or workers or basically those three high class kids, if he never entered that train and ended up shooting those three kids, it's very possible the Joker would never become the Joker. It was mere chance, mere opportunity that really pushed him into that situation and he might have not really become the Joker. Now even with that happening and in the end when he ends up again, spoiler alert, he ends up killing Frank Murray or, or Robert De Niro, of course the famous actor, when he ends up killing him on the show, that wasn't necessarily his plan at all. He really wanted to kill himself on the show but instead inspired riots and chaos everywhere. Now when you really look at this movie, this movie is doing an analysis of not necessarily an art piece that will create a shooter, but it's doing an analysis and putting up a mirror on society and showing us how our society ends up creating the villains that we are trying to get rid of out of our society. You see, it was social structures or lack thereof that caused the Joker to be the Joker. It wasn't ever his absolute ability or his even his choice to be the Joker. He never even really had the choice 
To be the Joker, the first social structure you really have to look at, of course, has to be income inequality. Now, in the history of the human kind, the only real way to get rid of income inequality, that's when the 1% has like all the wealth, has been through mass disease or war. That's why it's typical for an increase in income inequality, usually the crime rate ends up following. Income inequality is bad, bad news when it comes to civil unrest. Now this whole income inequality struggle can be seen in the movie through really looking at Thomas Wayne. Now of course when those three Thomas Wayne employees end up dying, Thomas Wayne says of course the killer was wearing a mask, a clown mask, that's because he would have to be a clown to do that. Basically all the have nots, they're all clowns. Now Thomas Wayne in this movie was running for president he was was running for a political position and for someone who wants to be basically the mayor of the city for him to be so disconnected to even have a sentence anywhere close to calling the have-nots clowns this just shows this just shows how disconnected the haves and the have-nots can be when it comes to what's actually going on in each other's side now of course the joker's mom always talks about how like if thomas wayne knew how i was living he would help but even with all of her letters to Thomas Wayne, Thomas Wayne never once sends anything, not even a penny, to help Arthur and his mom. Now the second systematic structure in this movie that creates a villain or creates someone who does mass evil, of course, is how we treat mental illness in a society. Now Arthur clearly has mental problems and it's clearly hard for him to find a job that he can work and be productive in, but he finds one and that's being essentially an entertainer. He entertains at hospitals, he entertains for businesses. Being a clown is his way of contributing to society in a way that he feels best. However, for him to be a productive member of society, he really depends on the social worker that he ends up talking to each week about the things that are just going on in his life. Now, this society worker really represents the minimum. You know, he has a line that says, you're basically never listening to me. He's the one that really gives them his psychoactive pills. And really, it's this society social worker that's keeping him from jumping off the ledge of insanity. So when the city cuts funding to that social worker so she can no longer actually give help to Arthur or help to the Joker, of course this leads him even further down a dark path where he inevitably can't even help himself in a way of going down. He even ask the social worker where he should get his drugs for and from and uh, she doesn't even know. Now the third social structure, the systematic failure that we have in our economy, of course, has to be guns. Now whether you're pro-gun or against gun, this is not necessarily a polarizing issue that the media makes it out to believe. But what this movie really puts a highlight on is the fact that the Joker, someone who's mentally unstable, someone who should never really have a gun, just ends up getting a gun. And without the checks and the balances in place in society to really make sure that the right people in society have guns and there's a way to vet people to make sure they don't have guns and there's a way to punish people for just giving away the guns that they have, we then create a society where someone like the Joker ends up having a gun which he doesn't have necessarily the mental capacity to understand the responsibility of having a gun. To drive a car, you need a driver's license. The Joker has a gun without a gun license and someone gave them their gun without any sort of re repercussions for doing it. If someone gives you your hand-me-down phone, well, you, you at least need their password for you to use the phone. So why, when someone gives you a gun, can you just use it off the rip without you needing any sort of passcode, without using some sort of touch ID? Like, obviously this Joker was set like back in the past, but it just puts in your mind that, wow, the Joker out of everyone in this movie, he should definitely not have a gun and he gets a gun. And one of the final but most important structural issue that this movie of the Joker really puts a highlight on is the role of the media when it comes to creating a villain. You see, shortly after the Joker kills those three people on the bus or train, the media cannot get enough of just posting him and putting captions 
on their newspaper and literally making him the face of their newspaper. You know, it's, it's society's obsession with these people like Ted Bundy, obsession with these school shooters. And it's only recently that in our lives, in our real life, that we've slowly started glorizing and talking about school shooters and putting their face on CNN and all these big media sources. You see, the Joker in this movie never felt empowered in his life, never under felt understood in his life, but for the first time, for the darkest thing he's ever done, which was kill people, that was the first time he ever got some real positive enforcement. He saw everyone on the media glorizing this clown figure, glorizing the symbol of fighting the rich. Now, of course, the Joker never meant for this, but his action of just protecting himself from these investment banker Thomas Wayne employees, his action of protecting himself from them, literally this criminal act that he committed is now being praised by society and praised by this world that the Joker lives in. And on the other hand, when he's honestly just trying to find his way in life and do something that he's passionate about, such as stand-up comedy, and I know, yes, the Joker is the worst stand-up comedian ever, basically, when you watch this movie. He gets literally laughed at by the millions that watch the Frank Murray show. And they find his performance so bad and so hilarious, Frank Murray himself calls up the Joker just so he can laugh at him in person. This is similar to what happens in social media in real life where we love to make fun of people online, we love to tear each other down online. At the same time, we glorize the violent, the evil acts that happen online. We glorize the six nines online. We glorize all these people who are maybe not the best positive role models for us. And in this world, the media even jumps off a cliff and the newspapers start getting more aggressive and more aggressive until they finally start literally printing kill the rich on the headline of the newspaper. Now, of course, some people have a theory that, you know, this is all through Joker's mind. So what can you really decide to be true? What is real? Did they really say kill the rich or is the Joker just imagining something that was way more aggressive than at the time? But all this movie is really doing is showing you how impactful the media is. The media in this world literally created the Joker, literally created the mob, and when the Joker finally had an audience for the first time when he was on Frank Murray's show, it was through that platform that they gave him that allowed him to make that speech and ended up saying the lines of, what do you get when you cross a mentally ill loner with a society that abandons him and treats him like trash? You get what you deserve. You see, after the movie, people are having the wrong conversations. The conversation shouldn't be whether the Joker inspires violence or he inspires terrorism or inspires a villain. The questions we should be asking ourselves is how can we fix the systematic failures in our society that creates a villain like the Joker? But as always, Flight Crew, have you seen the Joker? What do you think? Does it inspire violence? Does it inspire terror or is everyone just over exaggerating this and again repeating the same video games causes violence argument that they have been doing for the longest time now let me know in the comments below and let me know if you like the joker and as always the best most brazen investors are the uneducated ones why is that that's because the uneducated investor they never stop learning remember to like and subscribe because we make at least two videos every week about investing pop culture movies economics so make sure you hit that notification bell and you don't miss a thing and we flight crew we have to take off see ya